Perhaps you've been to a conference or a retreat or some other big Catholic venue where a speaker said, John 10, 10 reads, I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And then the speaker will explain that as a Christian, you should therefore be happy. And furthermore, if you are not happy, it is your fault. So get down to the serious business of feeling guilty that you are sad, lonely, and anxious. No, um, so that's terrible. And I don't think it's true. Hi, my name is Father Gregory Pine, and this is Ascension Presents. Because the reason for which we are not happy is not necessarily to be assigned as fault or as blame. I think we find the roots of it far deeper still. Truth be told, we're made for a happiness which goes beyond our imagining. Eye is not seen, nor ear heard, nor is it so much as dawned on the heart of man what God has ready for those who love him. While we're yet here on earth, we only get four tastes or we only get just a little peek behind the veil as to what that happiness is. And as a result of which, we're bound to suffer. We're bound to experience it as difficult. St. Augustine, that great figure of the tradition, gives us a keen insight into this when he famously writes, our hearts are restless until they rest in God. Truth be told, our restlessness is itself God's mercy. Imagine if we weren't restless. Imagine if we were contented. Imagine if you went throughout the course of your day and the only things you got accomplished were like a little laundry folded and maybe like half a bathroom cleaned and you said, it is well with my soul. I have come, I have conquered, and this is the purpose of my Christian vocation. Now, that's not to downplay the importance of emptying the dishwasher or cleaning your bathroom, all of which are great things. But also, there is something more to be said of your life. You have an identity and a mission which issues from the Most High God and is bound to return to Him in a blaze of glory. But we're broken open to a kind of infinite possibility, both in what we can know and in how we can love. And we get the whole course of our life in order to grow in that knowledge and in that love so that we might more perfectly live the image of God to which we are made. That's a complicated sentence. What do I mean exactly? I mean this, that you are given the very capacity to know God with his own knowledge of himself and to love God with his own love of himself. And until such time as you have drained that cup to its dregs, you will not be contented. You will not be satisfied. You will not come to rest. So, in St. Augustine's line, we have a beautiful reminder that we're meant to be restless. Mind you, we can experience a little bit of happiness here on earth, what we might call imperfect happiness or earthly happiness. So, the Lord promises that, you know, when you're baptized, when you come into the appreciation of the faith, the fullness thereof, that you're going to experience the hundredfold, even now. He says, with persecutions. <laughs> yeah, it's still, that that will only ever come to its perfection, will only ever experience perfect happiness or heavenly happiness in the life beyond. In the life of St. Augustine, we see just what this restlessness can lead to, the grace that it can bear. Rather than being contented like a pig in slop, we have come to find that we're, we're starved to our crazy bones, but animated by a desire for a life which lives beyond. Not one that sets aside present concerns, but helps us to engage those present concerns with greater love and devotion and mercy because we are able to see the connections between the here and now and the there and thereafter. So that as Christians, it's not as if we're just, uh, you know, deferring our happiness until a future time. We recognize the fact that the happiness of heaven spills over the bounds of heaven itself and begins to kind of flood the earth here and now in the already. And so we can, we can taste it, we can touch it, we can feel it, but we're always going to be oriented to the fullness thereof so that we're not left here to be contented with this, with the here and now. And so in the life of St. Augustine, again, we have just such a witness. I think in, in his life, you see that this, this time here on earth, it's not, it's not a resort. It wasn't easy for him, but nor is it a prison cell, as he might have thought previously before he converted to the Catholic faith. Rather, it's something more like an athletic training facility. That image comes from C.S. Lewis. So it's, it's difficult, it's tough, it's gonna require work, but ultimately it will conduce to the glory of God and the salvation of souls. First, our own soul, not because we're selfish, but because God trains all of his mercy on you. And in experiencing that mercy, then you can come to serve the needs of others and testify to the same so that they might partake thereof. I mentioned St. Augustine a few times in the course of this video. Was that product placement? Perhaps. Well, here we go. We're launching season two of Catholic Classics. So just like last time, we'll have little bite-sized episodes where we read the book 
and then comment upon it. So that way you can better appreciate what St. Augustine is saying and then profit from the realities, the mysteries, which he is leading us into. So if you wanna find out more about season two of Catholic Classics, go to ascensionpress.com slash Catholic Classics. And there you can sign up for a reading plan and find out more about the book that Ascension has published, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So we'll look forward to chatting with you then during season two of Catholic Classics. Until then, St. Augustine, pray for us.